Welcome to Data Structures and Algorithms. In this series, we're going to focus on being able to solve problems as quick as we possibly can. We're going to ignore any of the dull academic theory, and we're only going to introduce concepts as needed. So we're going to cover all of the core data structures you would cover in a Data Structures and Algorithms course. And I've also carefully selected some key algorithms that we're going to solve. Um, and these key algorithms are going to introduce different um, algorithm techniques. This series is designed to both make you a better software engineer, but also to be able to pass those tricky tech interviews and help land you a high paying job. So if you're new to TypeScript, or perhaps you've been a programmer for a while, um, but you haven't studied data structures and algorithms, or you haven't practiced them recently, you may have jumped onto leak code and surprisingly struggled with some of even the easy or medium difficulty questions. Um, and that's just due to not knowing some of these fundamental techniques um, that we're going to cover through this uh, introductory course. Um, once you have a good grasp on some of these fundamental uh, algorithm solving techniques along with the key data structures, uh, it's going to put you in a much better position to be able to solve these. So even if you've been programming for like five years or n x number of years, um, some of these uh, techniques, they may not be quite intuitive. So you might be able to solve it using brute force, um, but at the end of the day, these interviews are all about solving it um, problems, not just landing at an answer, but landing at it efficiently and solving the problem efficiently. So we're gonna discuss all about that. Even if you aren't intending to attend a technical interview anytime soon, Data structure and algorithms is a really important topic in software engineering because in your everyday coding, it's going to help you write more efficient code. So let's dive deep into the data structures and algorithms uh, topic. So to start off with, let's just define what an algorithm is. And an algorithm is simply just the steps or the instructions um, to solve some sort of task. So you can think of it like a recipe. Um, or it's simply the lines of code in a function uh, that helps you solve a clear cut goal. Take for instance, determining how secure your password is. Now, often when you register your account to a new website, um, you'll type in your password uh, and it'll tell you if it's strong or weak or anything like this. So if I just type in a very simple password here, we'll get very weak. Uh, this website also indicates the number of seconds it takes to crack. Um, so if I add some extra characters here like this, we can see that it's uh, now strong. Um, so did you notice how the feedback was instant? So as a user, you expect to be able to see whether or not it's strong or weak straight away. And this particular algorithm, uh, it also has this other um, thing that it's doing in addition to determining the strength is it's determining how long it takes to crack. Um, so that probably won't be implemented on other uh, websites. Um, but that's an algorithm at work. And it's just the lines of code executed um, to achieve a task. Um, so you can implement this in various different ways um, and that will determine how quickly it responds to your request. But in this particular case, we, you know, we can implement it in different ways, but we could also have bi different business logic associated with, you know, what the developer deems to be strong um, so that's all coded into the solution. Um, but when we're studying algorithms, we're, off, we're often um, trying to solve well-defined problems. So this is a well-defined problem, uh, and it could be an algorithm question, um, but you'll be given a bunch of constraints, for example. So if you would get a question like this, it might say, you know, this many special characters, this many characters in total, all that sort of stuff. Um, because right now the question's a little vague. Uh, well, it's open-ended uh, to interpretation. Um, but yes, this is an example of an algorithm. 
software engineering revolves around manipulating data efficiently. So when selecting a data structure, it's important that we do so to minimize our memory allocation and also maximize the speed in which our program is executed. Let's say you have a list of numbers that need sorting. You would probably choose an array to store your numbers. And this might seem like an obvious choice if you have any experience with coding, but why didn't we choose an object as the container or some other data structure as the container to store our data? Well, arrays make it easier to write your algorithm. Plus they're faster and more memory friendly for this particular example compared to some of the alternatives. And in this scenario, the array is the data structure while the ability to sort the numbers is the algorithm. But there are many instances where objects, for example, are the more efficient data structure to choose, uh, or perhaps some more custom data structures that we'll explore during this uh, course will be the superior option. Um, but how do you know what data structure to choose? Um, and also, more importantly, how do you know how to measure the efficiency of your code? Is your code efficient or not? Um, so we're going to uncover these topics. We're going to explore, um, firstly, when I look into memory uh, and uh, complexity analysis with big O notation. Um, and they're the key sort of fundamental things and concepts you need to know before you start tackling data structures and algorithms. So we're going to cover that as quickly as possible. Um, and then they'll put us in a good position to be able to uh, start to solve some of these tricky leak code questions.